feel like this is one of those songs that I feel like gets poo-pooed on by the fandom a bit too much because um uh, from what I understand uh the national final performance they thought was really bad look I watched it I could tell that it was a dinky little production with a really shoddy sound system so like no one could sound good there and I've seen clips of her in the pre-parties and she sounds perfectly fine so like like it kind of annoys me when people kind of assume that they're gonna sound bad because they heard them through some dinky little speakers or something like that like I could go on a rant about how people overreact to, like, shoddy phone recordings from pre-parties and stuff like that, but whatever. Uh, But, um, anyway, I enjoyed this song quite a bit. Like, it's a fun little pop rock song, kind of, like a screw my ex kind of song. And it is up my alley, so of course I'm going to like something like this. I will admit that it's kind of borderline in terms of its qualification chances. Like, my main concern is that spoken word bit they've added towards the end, because usually when someone does that at Eurovision, it just ends up being quite clunky, and I don't know how that's going to work out we'll just have to wait and see but um yeah um what do you think john Mm. i like what they've done with this song um with with the revamp um like i i think aiko's gonna bring it on the stage the the czech team have got good practice now at Mm. um, um really polishing up their entries for the eurovision stage um as you say, it's borderline, and I don't see it as being widely tipped to qualify, but there's big potential for a surprise here, I think. Mm. Um, and useless fact, um, this will be the 1,700th Eurovision song. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love useless statistics like that. <laughs> Always welcome on this podcast. 